We're ready for the last finishing touches on our bird. I'm going to start with a uniball pen, but if you have a fine Sharpie or even just a regular black ink pen, anything like that would work. And I just want to add a few details in the beak, the eye, and the legs. Um, looking at our bird that we're using, the photo, I see that he has a really sharp beak. You could do this with the tip of your paintbrush if you have a really excellent control. But if you use a Sharpie or some sort of other type of ink pen, that's fine as well. Whatever, whatever you want to use, whatever you're comfortable using. And what I'm doing right now is just cleaning up my lines. making sure that this looks finished looking and it doesn't have an incomplete look. I'm gonna put a few little hatch marks around his eye just to indicate his the feathers. And then I'm gonna go down to his legs his feet and just to find them a little bit more try to make the claw part look a little sharper give it a little point I think I'm gonna try putting a few little lines in the leaf just to show the distinction between the two leaves and maybe just a few <clears throat> details at the middle that's optional whatever you would like to do and then I'm just going to have already wet with a few drops of water the tops of all of my colors. And now I just want to add a few more just spots of color. Um, I'm going to start with the way his underbelly dried. I don't really like how that dried. It's not blending like I want it to. So I'm going to use clean water, a clean water um, sort of wash on my brush to just kind of feather my brush back and forth and get those colors to blend just a little bit more so they don't look so choppy. And then I'm going to take the leftover brown and reconstituting it by wetting it just a little bit. Roll my brush gently on the tip so that it's a little pointy on the end to give me more control. And I'm going to just add a few more of these little pin feathers in an effort to make this blend a little bit more smoothly. So we're just having a really light touch here. I'm not filling the whole thing in. I'm leaving some of the blue and some of the lighter browns showing. I'm gonna reload my brush just a little. Bring this down his back just a little farther to help define the back of his wing just a little.
I'm also going to use the brown to just add a little darkness at the bottom of his tail feathers to hopefully give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional feeling and a little bit of depth. Now at this point, you could add a background. You could use one of the techniques like the wet and wet wash and add a little background. You could just do some wash, uh, just a clean water wash. I would just do a little few sections at a time and I could get some green. If you're careful, you could just tap the end of your brush with your finger. Let that tap around. Uh, you could add a little blue in with your green to make some blue green. And you could do that. You could continue that all around the bird. And if you feel like you want it to blend together a little bit more, then just get clean water. And again, gently tap the end of your brush so that the colors will bleed together a little bit more. And you can continue that technique down as far as you want. It could go all the way up to the edge of the bird. Just make sure the blue feathers are nice and dry before you do that, otherwise everything's gonna bleed into each other. So you wanna make sure this is kind of the very last step. And again, this is optional. You don't have to add a background if you don't want to, but I'm just showing you how easy it would be to make it seem like your bird is kind of out in the wild And this is um, kind of like a stippling, or you could also think of it as pointillism. Normally, if you're using stippling in a painting situation, we call it pointillism. Okay, and again, if you don't want those to look like dots, you can just tap a little more water in there and sort of push those colors around and get them to blend a little bit more. This way, your background is kind of in a blurred, soft focus, and it doesn't take away from what's going on in the rest of your picture. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of push this around so that it surrounds the bird. I'm trying to be pretty careful that I'm not painting over any parts of the bird. And I could stop there and just let this sort of fade out so that it's a little darker on one side. If you want, you could continue this all the way around the whole entire background or leave it white or just do it in one corner. And that is it. We're gonna let this dry completely. As soon as it's completely dry, I'm gonna stack some heavy books on it so that it gets nice and flat so that it's ready to photograph. The last step, of course, once everything is dry, is to go ahead and sign your name. February 